Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, it's time. <laughs> Why am I doing my hands like this? <laughs> it's time for another um, book talk video, and this time it's about Our Happy Time by Gong Ji Young. And this one was translated by Sora Kim Russell from Korean to English. And um, yeah, I started reading this one in August. But I only finished it today. Um, in fact, I just finished it like a few hours ago. So, you know, I can assure you that the thoughts that I'm going to share with you guys in this video are going to be like really fresh. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I think that this book is kind of so-so. And yeah, you might wonder why am I making a book talk video, a book review video, uh, about a book that I have a um, lukewarm feeling about. And, you know, I would wonder about that too, because usually I would talk about books that I really love or really dislike, because usually I would have more things to say about those, uh, those kinds of books. This book's, you know, this book sort of sits comfortably in the middle, um, you know, sort of like three out of five stars um just kind of like so so um but you know it's kind of like so so in a strong sense if that makes sense <laughs> let's talk about this one so um in our happy time we follow this young woman who lives in south korea and her name is yu jung so basically um after her um third suicide attempt um, Yu Jung's aunt, who is a Christian nun, offers to take her to visit death row inmates um, on a weekly basis um, in a Korean prison. And um, you know, after she is convinced to uh, participate in these visits, she encounters one particular death row inmate. Um, his name is Yun Su. Um, and you know, and it is through this particular encounter that she starts to experience some kind of, um, you know, after their interactions, uh, she starts to gain insights, you could say, insights about herself and other people, which leads to her gaining new perspective and, quote-unquote, character change. <laughs> Um, so you could say that, uh, you know, this book is pretty much about how a, a suicide survivor meets with a death row inmate and how that meeting changes uh, the, the survivor. Now, um, I would say that this book, in terms of how it uh, navigates the story, there is, you know, there's this kind of... Um, inoffensiveness uh, that I that I feel from it but it doesn't mean that this is a book without uh, any triggering aspects so we have uh, things like bullying um, uh, dysfunctional family relationships abuse sexual assault suicide uh, prison gory deaths in here as well so there are quite a few things that can be triggering in this book but what I mean about how it feels kind of inoffensive is that um, much of this book in terms of how it explores the characters um, uh, you know the how the characters develop feels like it leans more on sentimentality <laughs> um, so you could sort of imagine that you know something about this book gives off this kind of like lifetime movie vibe where um not to say that it's not complex but there is a lot of kind of like sentimental feel from it that kind of makes you um at certain times feel a little bit emotionally manipulated um there are quite a few mushy moments in this book as well but at the same time this book also feature um i would say fair fairly uh in-depth uh discussion on 
certain uh, certain topics, such as uh, capital punishment, um, the human condition in general, human suffering, um, religion, uh, in particular, and I and, and you know, and I said in particular because I'm going to expand on that later. Um, socio-political uh, situation in South Korea as well, especially when it comes to uh, social injustice. So those things are definitely explored in this book and um, in, in, in a way that is fairly in-depth. So I don't think that, you know, this book is just all sentimental. There are certain things that um, you know, some readers who are looking for something a little bit more critical would find kind of, um, I would say, rewarding in a sense when reading this book also. Now, just now I mentioned something about religion. <laughs> and one of the supporting characters in this book, Aunt Monica, is a Christian nun. And uh, as a result, much of her interaction with other characters in this book uh, are kind of religious in nature. Um, but as you read on, you realize that eventually uh, the religious tone is not only something that you find in the dialogues of Aunt Monica, but you can also find it that, you know, find that element throughout the narrative, Pepper throughout the narrative and also through the dialogues of Yu Jong and uh, Yun Su as well. So, I, you know, what that leads to is that this book eventually have a bit of that Christian fiction vibe to it, which is kind of strange because I did not expect that. <laughs> um, I don't have anything against Christian fiction, but I feel that you know, I guess it was just surprising, you know, because um, I didn't think that it was going to be, you know, I, I wouldn't say that this book is a Christian fiction, but I just didn't expect that it's going to have that Christian fiction feel to it. And what it does to the narrative is that it, one, it sort of leans onto the sentimentality aspect of this book um, you know and those two aspects the the religious and the sentimental part of this book just sort of blend together and in a way you explore the characters through the lens of their religious views and sometimes it can feel kind of jarring <laughs> um, and maybe slightly alienating I would say less universal because there's this very at certain points there are kind of intense um, vibe religious vibe uh, with the uh, you know with the exchanges between different characters um, so yeah, I would say uh, that certain that you know that certainly breaks the immersion a little bit. Um, if you don't like reading Christian fiction, I would say that uh, those parts would probably kind of turn you off. <laughs> I you know I I wouldn't say that I don't like Christian fiction, but it's just that usually they tend to have certain kinds of preachiness associated with them, and. Um, and you could, you know, I could say that there are certain, you know, a little bit of preachiness in this book as well. It's not very strong, but, you know, here and there, there are parts that feel kind of preachy in a religious sense. And again, I think that that might be a turn off to some people. <laughs> And uh, throughout this book also, when it comes to the tone, there is something about the tone that I can't really put, you know, um, put, ex you know put my finger on. I, I, I'm not exactly sure um, how to describe it, but there's this kind of like religious optimism in this book. Uh, 
the thing is, this book did not surprise me. Once I knew that um, it was going, you know, once I realized that it has this kind of Christian fiction feel, and I had my expectation on how the story would develop, how it eventually develops did not surprise me. <laughs> and yeah, in that sense, I would say maybe that's why this book, you know, was, uh, I did not rate this book very highly because it just felt kind of predictable in that sense. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, those are pretty much my thoughts about this book. Uh, yeah, I think it's mainly because of how uh, this book blends religion in its narrative in a way that may make some people feel alienated by its tone. Um, that, you know, it, 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 it sort of affects the narrative, uh, in general, because eventually it becomes a little bit more, uh, certain parts become a bit too focused on religion. So, especially in a Christian religion. So, yeah, um, have you guys read this book? And, you know, if you have, what are your thoughts about it? And, you know, let me know in the comments down below if you have any other comments, anything else to say. You can, you know, say it in the comments below as well. <laughs> or not. Anyway, uh, I'm going to end this video right now. And uh, I'll see you again in a different one. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching. And bye.